Good morning. Today on Spotlight, the leaders of the Michigan Nonprofit Complete Count Committee, which is informing everyone in this state that will listen about the importance of participating in the 2020 census count. Hassan Jabber of Access and Donna Murray Brown of the Michigan Nonprofit Association will be my guests. It's Sunday, June the 30th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. And welcome to Spotlight. If you haven't seen this sign, uh, Be Counted Michigan 2020, you will be seeing it a whole lot more between now and 2020. It's very important. Uh, Hassan, have the stakes ever been higher for the Mich Michigan census, the census across the nation? It, the stake is very high for us here in Michigan. Um, um, so many programs are funded through uh, federal money uh, that is based on the census numbers. Um, 40 in fact, 40% of the state budget is federal money based on the census numbers. 40% of the state budget. 40% of, the, of the state budget. And these are really critical programs. These are Medicaid, Medicare, Housing, Section 8, uh, 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 children uh, uh, lunch programs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, many school funding comes from uh, 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 based on the census numbers. And so the infrastructure, our roads, our bridges. Roads, bridges. In addition to the fact that um, we can actually, again, lose congressional representation in Washington. We can lose a voice in Washington. And that happened last time, around and 10 that, years ago. That happened in ten, uh, 2010, in the last uh, uh, census. Michigan was only uh, one of two states uh, that lost population in, in 2010. So and we need we to lose make a seat, that means somebody, another state, is gaining a seat. Exactly. In addition, mm -hmm. uh, we can lose um, data uh, critical for businesses in terms of making decisions of investments in, in our state. Um, so uh, the stake is high. It's going to take all of us mm -hmm. to make sure that we uh, have a complete count in Michigan and to make sure that we can show uh, increase in population, uh, and, and that's critical for us. Donna, uh, that's where you come in, and the mm -hmm. associations, the nonprofit associations mm -hmm. across this state, what role are you playing and who are you partnering with? So we are partnering, it's a nonprofit campaign that's really geared towards leveraging the trust that nonprofits have across the state. So we are working with statewide um, uh, associations, statewide nonprofits, and even some regional nonprofits that have are, are considered a center of influence and can really speak to their community around the importance of being included in the census count 2020. These are organizations that I guess populations that sometimes are very hard to get to trust yeah, absolutely. And so in terms of um, our, our aim and our focus is really around vulnerable populations or vulner populations that are considered underrepresented and historically have been underrepresented in the count. So we're looking at communities of color, communities where there are immigrant populations, communities of low wealth. Um, but one of the communities I think that often is overlooked are the community of children. So children that are um, ages zero to five are really um, not represented in the, in the census count and becomes problematic when we're thinking about how many people are actually here in the state of Michigan. Yeah. Hassan, how do you get to these people and make them realize that, um, that they can be trusted to do the census, that the information that they're going to give to the questions that the census takers are asking them is not going to be used against them in some sort of way. So that's why this Michigan Nonprofit Coalition is so critical, because we need trusted voices. We need voices that are been in communities, uh, build relationships in the communities, and, uh, and have these trusted voices be the messengers for us. Uh, the trust is an issue. Uh, this year, the 2020 census is mostly based on the internet. Confidentiality is an issue. Privacy is an, is an issue. Um, the question of citizenship 
uh, which created fear in, in, in communities, especially immigrant communities, traditionally so, undercounted communities. So give me an example whether it's uh, access, um, approaching someone in uh, the Middle Eastern community and being able to say, okay, mm -hmm. um, is that census taker going to be someone that has sort of that stamp of approval from access on it? So they say, okay, I I'm good to talk to them rather than just Joe Doe coming up asking the questions. Access was 48 years relationship in our community and the trust we built with this community. We're going to invest this in making sure that the census is complete in our community. We're also going to provide resources to community members that they need these resources, language barriers, cultural barriers, uh, uh, access to internet, all of this, transportation. We are willing to invest this relationship, start with trust, but then provide the resources that's needed in the, in the communities. This is the way we can actually come close mm -hmm. or really achieve the complete count uh, campaign that we desperately need all of us. It's, it's about all of us in the community. Mm -hmm. Donna, you were going to say something. Yes, uh, so it is about the trust, but I think even before you gain trust in communities, it's around education. You'd be surprised how many people actually don't know about the census and how it's even administered. And I can right. think even when I was younger, I knew something was happening every 10 years perhaps, but I didn't know the nuances about that. And so- Well, it's not something that's on the news for them it, every single day. Absolutely. It's, every 10 years, all of a sudden you start hearing this talk, but right. it's not something that's constant. Right, and, and, and the reality of it is, is that it is in our constitution. It is a part of democracy. It is a part of civic participation. But oftentimes, many people, especially the underrepresented in the census, have um, no connection to what is this system called democracy. And the first step of that is being counted in the census. So we've been starting with education around what is the census? Why does it matter? We heard why it's uh, important, what's at stake. But then after we go from the education, it really is to share with them what is at risk for them in their um, in their communities around programs that they depend on, um, they maybe not they maybe have a hard time connecting the census to a program that they're actually receiving or services that they're actually receiving. And I think the best um, uh, opportunity to do that and the best messenger for that are nonprofit organizations. All right, I ne need to sneak a break in here. When we come back, I want both of you to address the question of: Do people have? to participate mm -hmm. in the census. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. And welcome back to Spotlight. All right, do people have to participate in the census? When that census taker comes up and says, I wanna ask you some questions, can you say, nope, don't wanna be bothered? So, so let me level set just first before even getting to a person knocking on your door. Because it's changed in terms of the modernization, it's, in the mail. It could, it's actually um, going to be an online first. Okay. And then there's also going to be a mail option. There's also a call-in option as well. And so the very last step is actually someone knocking on your okay, door. So if you didn't do the other it's, steps, absolutely. then someone's coming to your door. Right. So All those right. changes are, are um, one of the uh, points of education. And by law? you're supposed to participate. Expectation yes. is to participate, and actually by law, you are to participate in the census. All right, there's someone out there right now, Hassan is saying, and what <laughs> if I don't, what's gonna happen? There is, uh, it, it, there is no precedent that anyone being penalized, uh, but the law says you have to participate in the census. Um, um, and it's we, incumbent upon organizations like yours as well exactly. as we exactly. in the media to make them understand why it's important to participate. I think we need to be making the case why we all need to participate. The stake is high for all the reasons we listed. If we do a good job convincing everyone, uh, then I think the results, uh, that the communities understand why we need a community-wide effort to, uh, to do this right. Hassan, if we end up losing a congressional seat, 
what are the chances that that will take place in southeast Michigan versus the west side of Michigan or even the middle part of this state? The likelihood is going to be southeast Michigan. So uh, we'll see two representatives pitted against each other exactly. most likely. Exactly. Most likely in the metro Detroit area? And, and, and the, the troubling is that we lose in representation um, in Washington. So that's, uh, 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 it, and, and especially in, in communities that we desperately need to have a strong voice in Washington. Mm -hmm. All right, we need to take one more break. We'll hurry right back with more questions right after this break. Stay with us. The Michigan uh, Nonprofit Complete Count mm -hmm. Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that and, and, and the makeup of it. How many mm -hmm. different organizations are represented? So we have uh, about 50 um, organizations that are part of the, the uh, Nonprofit Complete Count Committee that span across the entire state, um, wanting to focus um, particularly on uh, underrepresented populations that are actually all over, whether it's in the urban areas or in the rural communities. So all of that is covered. Um, part of the, um, the uh, advisors on the Complete Count Committee is to make certain that the information that is uh, disseminated across the state is in a way that the community can receive it, whether it's based on the language, um, the culture, uh, the trust, all of those uh, factors that help to engage people in that. The other piece of it is, is that um, working with nonprofit organizations, knowing that this is important, they didn't necessarily prepare for this to say, so how do we get involved with that? So we wanted to make sure that we amassed resources to be able to put out into communities so they can use strategies that work in their community for making certain that populations that they serve are engaged in that process. So it's a, it's a process of education, building awareness. It's also a process of providing resources and so that everyone across the state, the entire state, can be engaged in what we think is a very uh, important process. The other piece is that we understand as nonprofit organizations that the resources that we provide are very important. When you think about every person who's not counted being $1,800 per person per year for 10 years, that was a that's lot, a lot that's of dough. A lot of dough. <laughs> and so when you think about that, um, we have to make certain that we keep those resources because again, if someone is not counted, but they still require services, they still are here and services are still, resources are still needed to maintain the level of support that, that they need. So we're involved because we understand who's in community and we understand how to connect in community and we also have the trust of the community. We're a trusted messenger and it's proven time and time again that when we ask people to engage in a process or engage um, in voting or engage in any part of civil society, when a nonprofit makes that ask, a person usually actually meets that, that particular request. Uh, so we're counting on that. Level of trust. There. Level of trust. All right, because mm -hmm. they've worked in the community before. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Uh, people need to know that if they want to get more information, where should they go? Is there a particular website? Yeah, we have a, um, an actual website that's dedicated to the work that we're doing. It's BeCountedMI2020.com. Okay, very good. And can they also go, if, if they're Access. more used to going to Access's website, you've got them linked over? We do. Accesscommunity.org. And uh, we have a link. Accesscommunity.org. Okay. Good, mm -hmm. and they can get information there. They can as well. get information and link to uh, other resources. Oh, all right. Uh, the two of you are wearing two different hats here. You have your day to day job yeah. uh, where you get the paycheck, and then, of course, you got this volunteer role as well. Uh, talk a little bit about access for the person out there who's watching this, not familiar with access and what you do. So, access is a nonprofit organization started 48 years ago serving mainly immigrant communities coming from the Arab world. But we now have staff that speak 18 languages. Mm -hmm. We have 120 programs. We have offices in Detroit. And so you have and 11 different offices? Especially? We have uh, actually 11 different mm -hmm. offices in Oakland, Macomb, Detroit, Dearborn, Hamtramck. 
and we serve almost 90,000 people on a yearly basis. We provide services in 18 languages, and we cover the whole gamut of economic, social, uh, health. 70% uh, of our programs are providing health um, um, services. Um, in addition, we have the Arab American National Museum, which is one of only museums in Dearborn, in Dearborn uh, that document the history of immigrations of Arab Americans and their contribution. Uh, it's a really unique institution here in the Detroit region. Um, uh, in addition, we have a couple of other um, um, national programs, including Center for Arab American Philanthropy, giving back in the community, and also also helping community grass organizations all over the country build capacity to serve their communities. All right. mm -hmm. uh, you're reaching out to the media. Um, uh, I, I, I know you've got to be working with the Arab American News as well as the other media outlets uh, throughout the mm -hmm. Arab American community. And in fact, and Donna can tell you this, we, we have a campaign especially working with media and ethnic media yes. because mm -hmm. we think that this the, the ethnic media, who unfortunately been ignored in the last census, mm -hmm. have a very, very critical role in terms of building that trust and building that educational materials mm -hmm. and making sure that this goes to the communities that we haven't been paying attention to. Mm -hmm. in right. The, in the and, and, and research has shown that people trust mm -hmm. uh, their various community publications exactly. more than they trust the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. You know, this Channel 7 can tell you to do something, <laughs> yeah. but a lot of times if you yeah. pick up and you read the Michigan Chronicle or the Arab American News or some other thing, mm -hmm. and, you th and they tell you to do it, then you say, okay, now I'll do it. That's mm -hmm. The more we take this campaign grassroots. The more we take this campaign grassroots, the more successful we're going to be. Mm -hmm. It's really all about education and trust. And, mm -hmm. and th we, we have to mobilize communities. Mo communities can take the lead, and right. we can teach mm -hmm. each other. And, uh, and, and this is where we need to be focusing. That's why uh, m and and the campaign they're leading is so different this year, so mm -hmm. critical this year, because it's all about connecting with communities. Hassan is right. In terms of the trust that uh, nonprofits have, and certainly um, ethnic media has been really key to, I think, what we um, see as a successful campaign so far. And I, I really believe that nonprofit organizations now, with this uh, particular work that they're doing with Census, are poised for the other pieces of civic engagement that we'll be looking at in terms of now the new opportunity with Prop 3 to draw the lines for, um, uh, Prop 2 rather, for drawing the lines for um, voter engagement and then looking at Prop 3 in terms of having people engaged. So we see um, the Census as being a really important first step and nonprofit organizations really being um, positioned nicely to be able to engage people um, into this process. And some, um, for the very first time, it's going to be census. Right. Um, you also are uh, president and CEO I am. of the Michigan Nonprofit mm -hmm. Association. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, how did they get you to take on this fight? <laughs> you know, so we have, along with Hassan. This here. isn't our first time actually yeah. doing this. We have uh, participated in the 2010 um, census, mm -hmm. and um, we always believe that census is an important um, piece of work for for nonprofit organizations to engage and especially to connect with their communities. So having the opportunity to do it in 2020, and then recognizing there were going to be so many changes, the modernization of it being online first. Um, the many barriers to broadband across the state in terms of urban and rural communities um, having that issue. We knew that it was important for us to really start preparing, I mean we did two years ago really, to say how can nonprofit organizations um, be able to serve their communities by getting them engaged in ways that um, are different and unique and from a grassroots uh, level. And so this is how that campaign uh, was born. So this is really an extension 
of work that M&A uh, already does with nonprofit organizations in terms of advocacy and public policy work and providing resources so nonprofits can advance their mission. We feel like all of this is really connected and the census is so pivotal in terms of the resources that nonprofits need to be able to do their work that it was a really a no-brainer to say we are going to get involved in the census 2020 and we are going to learn from the lessons that we had from 2010 and we are going to be bigger and better in terms of our efforts and lo and behold um, it was something that I think was pretty smart in terms of getting uh, people engaged. Now the Michigan Nonprofit Association is based in Lansing it but is. you also have offices in Detroit. In we, Detroit. We do. What we about serve, Grand Rapids the west side of the state? We have partnerships with organizations across the state so our presence is really felt across 83 counties in the state of Michigan being a statewide association. Okay, mm -hmm. all of this is happening, uh, and you touched on it, whether it's redistricting, which is tied up in the courts right now as mm -hmm. well, and we'll be getting some interesting rulings on mm -hmm. that, uh, but in the backdrop of a highly contested 2020 presidential race, um, a zillion Democrats uh, running mm -hmm. for the opportunity to face the incumbent president. Mm -hmm. Of course, right now he's being challenged by only one person in, in the Republican Party. Uh, maybe more will jump in. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the final count will be uh, as we continue to go down the stretch here. Um, but all this is happening in that highly politicized type of atmosphere. Is that help or hinder what you're trying to do? You know, the census at the end, Chuck, is all um, about science. Mm -hmm. It's about data. Mm -hmm. It sh should not be politicized. It uh, should be, but it is. It, right? it is. <laughs> it is, unfortunately. But the role of the census, the census is a government science agency. Its role is to do an accurate count of population. Mm -hmm. That's it. And any attempt to politicize the census is doing harm to the census and to the communities. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully, hopefully, we don't add any political agenda to the very critical and difficult job the census needs to be doing. Mm -hmm. right. so now I'll give you the final word on that. So I would say really against it being politicized, but then highly encouraged about the visibility that once uh, activity that was so benign as the census is getting all of this attention, and so by that, I'm that's hoping that that's the good side of it. So I'm hoping that people will now for the first time actually maybe be triggered to say, well, this is the census, this thing must be really important. How do I participate or how do I learn more? And so having that appetite that I think people are craving to really be engaged and really to understand how things are working, hence so many people running for office, uh, for, the pres for the highest office of the country, I think people are now more engaged than they ever been. And this represents an opportunity for us to get them engaged in the census. And I think the time, the time is great. So I'm looking at it positively in terms of people really wanting to be engaged and the census and we, we're hoping the work that we're doing together is going to get people um, to, to take that first step in the census. All right, Donna Murray Brown, mm -hmm. Hassan Jabber, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us you. and best of luck on the yes. census count. And we're here to help as well in the media. So we'll uh, follow this mm -hmm. all the way up through the full process in thank 2020. You. Thank you. And we want to thank you at home for joining us. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week.